Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is still Saturday, February 27th. Well, we got another month almost gone. It's 10.47 a.m. Okay, this is, uh, I'm sharing you some messages that I found in Dawn's newsletter that um, I find it amazing how so many times I, and I, I'm probably guilty for not sharing more of them more times. I just, you know, it's the days when I get so many, I kind of get overwhelmed. I'll skim over them, probably don't give them enough attention, and I delete them. If something doesn't just pop right out at me. So I'm sorry for doing that because you might have got some good out of them. So I'm trying not to do that anymore. All right, I'm going to start with Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. I woke up this morning knowing how unworthy I am to be in the kingdom of God. Stop. I was just saying the same thing myself last night. We'll continue. And that because of my sin... Jesus shed his blood on the cross and died for me. And I wept, remembering the plan of redemption. I think, stop, a spirit of condemnation has been trying to pull me down and remind me of my past. And I was saying something on the with the team about it and and Dan quoted um, for if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so I find it odd that you know I, I just said that to him the other night and then last night it was trying to aggravate me again. And I I blew it off right away saying, No, Jesus died for me and I am forgiven. I am forgiven for my sins. Okay, I'll move on. I didn't weep last night, but I did a, a few nights back thinking how bad I was. In my opinion... When I knew better, I should have known better. He said, now this is after she said this part, okay? Marcia said this part. I wept remembering the plan of redemption. He said, that would be Jesus, no one can come to the Father except through me. There is nothing in the natural realm that you can do apart from me that will earn the right of eternal life i am the only way and i have sent the holy spirit to live in you if you will make a place for him and that was the end of it that's all he said and i want to ask you this have you made a place for the Holy Spirit have you asked Jesus to fill you to the brim with your with his Holy Spirit or have you asked the Holy Spirit to come in and say Holy Spirit come into my vessel I, I, I remember saying I know I'm a broken vessel but Jesus put me back together again can you Please fill me to the brim. I want more and more and more. Oh, la makashi mana sora karasi manati. Isakatoli mashira kasola. I'm sorry, I can't help it. That just happens every time I say that. Because he knows I mean it. So when you invite the Holy Spirit and you mean it, he will come in. And if you don't pray in the Spirit, you ask Him to give you that gift as proof that you're filled. 
All right, here's the verse, John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world through him might be saved. And the word in the first uh, verse, verse 16, the word believes, when you look it up in Strong's, you will find it's more than just believing Oh, I believe that if I sit on that chair, it'll hold me up. That's just a straight out, flat belief. Well, even the demons and Satan believe in Jesus. They know of his power. They know what he can do. And they tremble at the, his name being spoken. His name will shoo them away, so to speak. So they believe and obey when they're commanded in his name to leave. How much more so should a Christian who's, or person who's inviting him in should not just believe, which is faith, but also commit obey prove it by your actions do the deeds that we are called to do by jesus jesus said whatsoever you do unto the least of thy brethren that you do unto me likewise if you refuse to do something for somebody, you're refusing to do it for Jesus. So you remember that. You have to love the unlovable. And you have to help those who hurt you in the past. Forgive and help them anyway if they need help. If it's an honest, needy request. Not You don't let somebody suck the life out of you. If they're calling you every day or every other day, oh, can you please go to Burger King and get me a meal? Because they don't want what's in the kitchen. Okay, I, I did that once. And then I realized, here it was, 8.30 at night. Her mama had left her. She was kind of mentally impaired but she could be left alone with her pregnant sister and um, she called me to go come and get her money that her mama left her with to go to a church outing the next day so she was about to get to go do something really fun and they would be eating there and that's why she needed $20 and I let her talk me into taking her to the fish place and getting her a fish sandwich. See, now, if I had done that, if she had had money but not a car and did called me every other night, or worse, every night, or too often, come take her here, come take her there, like I had nothing else to do, then that's different. Sometimes you have to draw a line and say, no, I will be glad to take you out once a week so you don't have to eat what, you have, what you're able to fix or what your mother left for you to have, okay? Which night should I put on my calendar and tell me what time so I can plan on it? You see, you're still being kind. You're still doing good. But you're compromising, okay? She's not needing to go to the ER, okay, y'all? It's different. All right, let's move on. 
don't know how that even came up. Surely the Holy Spirit must have had me say that to somebody. Somebody's being abused or taken advantage of. Stop it. He doesn't mean for you to let somebody take advantage of you. All right. Uh, let's see. Was I going to share this one? Yes. There is absolutely no reason to feel alone. This is Jesus talking. I know you do at times, but I do not want you to feel alone. I am with you always. I said in my written word that I would never leave you, and I meant it. I am in you. See how it complements the other? He's in you through the Holy Spirit. Okay? There is no separateness between you and me. We are forever as one. This is talking to, of course, truly born again, not playing churchianity, Christians. We are forever as one. When you feel alone, talk to me as if I were there with you. Because I am. Don't you love that? When you get lonely, you just start, you just have to know he's right here. Pick a chair. I have two chairs in front of me here. Jasper's got that one. So we'll just say Jesus is sitting there under my wheel of color. And my poor numbers are falling off. So I'm going to have to paint them on in black. Okay, that's okay. Anyway, when I, I don't have to imagine him here because I already know it. And I just start talking. I might be eating. I might be doing something else. I'm, I might be, because I've already prayed over my food, so I've included him there and whatever. You just start saying, Lord, I'm just, I'm just so down about this stuff that's going on. And how people are just turning their backs on you. And I just, I'm, I'm so frustrated. Why are we still here? Why, why is this happening already? And we can't do anything about it in this mortal body. You see what I'm saying? When I, when I get frustrated over something or, or maybe I'm really happy about something. And I'm like, oh Lord, that was such a wonderful message you gave to so-and-so. And I just can't wait to see you. And it's like, he's right there and he's hearing me. You know why? Because he is. Okay. So, when you feel alone, talk to me as if I were there with you because I am. Here is a scripture from the Message Bible in Psalm 66, 19 through 20. But he most surely did listen. He came on the double when he heard my prayer. <laughs> he came on the double. That must mean he came running really fast. <laughs> Is my baby sleepy? Is he ready for nap time? Are you ready to go take a nap? You want to go take a nap? Oh, you sweet baby. We'll go take a nap in a minute, okay? Then mommy get down with this and we'll go take a nap. Okay? Okay. All right, back to this. This verse, Psalm 66, 19 through 20. But he most surely did listen. He came on the double when he heard my prayer. Blessed be God, he didn't turn a deaf ear. He stayed with me, loyal in his love. I love that. That was given to Bev Robinson. Let's see. Okay, I want to share this one too, because it's real important. 
Is there anything you have to prove to others when it comes to your love for me? Idle talk is cheap and comes at little cost. Many think that because they got saved, they can rest on their laurels and skate through life with little effort. Nothing could be further from the truth. As a believer, you want to be a doer of my word, not someone who hears heartfelt words and doesn't act upon them. Boy, that's a good one. There's too many people like that. Like I said, churchianity. You go to these denominations that say it's wrong to try to add works to the blood. I don't know how many comments I've had to erase. I mean, I try telling them and they want to argue and then I'm like, oh, forget it. I just delete the whole thing. Because they're clearly in a religious mindset tied in a bow with their denomination that you cannot add works to the blood. That is a slap in the face to Jesus. And they buy it because it's so easy to not have to give of your money, stop and help a guy Fix his tire. How about you're busy? You're in a hurry. You got a party to get to. Oh, it's a good party. It's your grandma's birthday party. But do you think she'd mind if you were 15 minutes late because you helped somebody change a tire? Really? I just wonder. I don't think my grandma's would have been mad. I actually didn't have a relationship with my grandmas, but you get the point. Uh, okay, his scripture that he was led to or was given, I don't know which, is 1 John 4, 7 through 8 in TLB. I think that's the Living Bible. Dear friends, let us practice loving each other. For love comes from God, and those who are loving and kind show that they are children of God and that they are getting to know him better. But if a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God, for God is love. And this one was given to Kevin Robinson. All right, the last one here. These are always good ones given to Jonas. All right, let me go ahead and read it. Memories of days gone by can be good or they can be bad. What? Wait a minute. Listen to how this ties in with the first one. Honest to Pete, Lord, you are something else. You are amazing. You are just an amazing, almighty God. Memories of days gone by can be good or they can be bad. What do you do with those memories? Do you remember through the eyes of judgment and negativity? Or do you see them through my eyes of love and favor? Many of the things you remember in a negative light were harmful to you. That was not my plan. Let my spirit enter and heal those memories that have left 
a hurtful, ugly scar. He said, let my spirit enter. And up here it ended with, I have sent the Holy Spirit to live in you if you will make a place for him. I do not believe for a single second this is pre-planned. I find it amazing. Let the Holy Spirit come in. He's probably already there if you're born again. But you want him all the way to the top. You want as much of him as your spirit. Spirit temple can hold. So anyway, he said, let my spirit enter and heal those memories that have left a hurtful, ugly scar. The verse on this one is Jeremiah 30. Oh my gosh, Lord. This is at least the fourth time this week I have heard something from Jeremiah 30. This is verse 17 from the NASB. For I will restore you to health, and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast, saying, It is Zion. No one cares for her. They have called you an outcast, saying, It is Zion. No one cares for her. How many of you have been outcast from your family, from your friends, from your work co-workers? This one was given to Jonas Bowen. It's amazing. This, these were all great messages that I have no doubt came from the Lord. And I pray they blessed you this day, that you got something out of them, that they will help you, help you grow, help you not beat yourself up anymore if you've been doing that. And if you have said goodbye to all that, beating yourself up and it's trying to come back on you, it is a spirit of condemnation. You kick it to the curb. You say, I rebuke you, demonic spirit of condemnation. Get out of here in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth and bother me no more. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So get out and go back to the dry places from where you came and do no damage on the way. See? Use the name of Jesus. Then you can say, I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and my whole building that I live in or my home, whatever you're living in. Plead the blood of Jesus over it. And that's the end of my video for right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connections of all of us, of all of ours, and over each and every one of us and all, all of our devices and internet connections. I got it backwards, but that's okay. I pray you have a blessed day in the Lord. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.